In this project, we're going to walk you through a simple, um, simple process of importing a CR2 file with texture maps already applied to it. We're going to modify one of those maps, that being that of the face, and then we're going to export the the modified map and we're going to also export a CR2 file that has that map linked to it so we can import it into another program such as Daz Studio or Poser. Okay, let's get started. We are going to we are going to drag and drop the CR2 file directly into the viewport. This is an easy way of importing files. Uh, you can also do it through the file menu over here saying file import, but this is what we do. We have the import textures option checked. That's going to uh, locate um, and load in the textures that are already there. Now it's important to note that um, often the, the, the textures will come in automatically um, if it can properly locate them. If it's in a, a standard runtime structure, uh, it will often locate those, those files so you won't have to locate them. But if for whatever reason there's something on your system which is set up in a way that's confusing Blacksmith 3D, you may have to specify the, uh, the, uh, f the folder location for these maps. But in this case, it found them all perfectly, so we're just going to continue along. And we can notice here under the Maps tab, is showing a little thumbnails of all the texture maps that were just uh, recently imported into it. Okay. Now we're going to uh, take a look a little closer here at a few common issues that might uh, you, you might encounter. Um, <coughs> if you're going to notice this gray area here, this is a um, it's an extra layer of polygons for the brow, and um, I'm going to just pause here for seconds. Eyebrow. And we're just emphasizing that this is a part of the model here by, de by design because um, we use the picker tool with material set, uh, the material type set, so we can easily just click on that and bring up this box. Uh, and it says that we have the transparency channel strength is set to 100%. So that means this thing is just meant to be transparent. Uh, on this particular mo model, there's there's no transparency map, but I think if you get some custom textures, they'll have transparency maps on that brow to give you uh, so it's somewhat separate from the the face um, <laughs> but in this case it's not it just comes in uh, with absolutely no map applied and it's a set to be transparent now if we go to transparency maps here right we're gonna also uh, because like I said there is no map but if that map was assigned you would have saw up here but there's also transparency maps um, for the eyelashes um, as you can see and we're doing this through the display mode. So viewports display mode, transparency map. Now we're looking at bump maps. We're just going through all the different maps just so you can see everything that's here. And again, you notice there's no bump maps on those. That's why it says no map applied. And then this is a very subtle bump map, just a little bit of uh, uh, detail here. It's, um, and it's, these, uh, these are the default textures that come with the model. So they're relatively low resolution. That's why they look a little grainy. But anyway, we went back to color maps here, and uh, we're just going to uh, we're going to address this issue here. This is often what you want to do. I just selected um, by element. I'm going to go back here for a second. So I use this picker, and um, I use the type as element. That means if you select, a click on something, all the attached polygons to it are going to get selected as well. So Go, going back, that's what we did. Uh, we just selected this area and then we go to edit and hide selected surface. That's a really quick way of just hiding stuff. You can also create a display group um, for that and then hide and uh, toggle the hiding on and off for that. But we're just going to quickly hide it just to demonstrate. And in the exact same way that brow, there's also a layer on top of the eyeball here and that's called the eye surface. Again, it's transparency sets to 100%. So we are going to just for the sake of demonstration, uh, we're going to hide that away as well using the picker tool with the material set. So that's just selected all the polygons that have that material. And we are, um, there we go. And we are just going to hide it again. Hide it out of the way so we can see his beautiful eyes uh, coming through. And he looks a little less scary. Okay. Um, so uh, we're just going to take a little look around the model again, see if there's any other issues that we should draw your attention to. Um, oh, just those are all the maps. Ah, yes. Okay. Now we're going to take this face. Our intention is just to do some modifications of the face. So, so when we save this out, we don't want to save over top of the old map, or we don't want the the paths to get confused by using the same file name but saving a different location. So we're going to save a completely different file name, and this one's going to call newface.jpg. 
and we're just going to paint uh, just a random paint stroke over top of it and undo it. At just We just did a couple here and undid, uh, but we're going to eventually just paint one and leave it on. And there it is. So nothing terribly interesting. It's just a big red stripe across his face. Um, got splashed with some paint, whatever. This is not meant to be uh, anything meaningful. We're just demonstrating the uh, the workflow. So what we're doing is now we're saving out the map first. We right clicked on it and, uh, <coughs> and we uh, said export map. Let's just go back to that just for a second. It happened a little fast. Here we go. Um, and here we go. There we go. I'm going to click on export right here, right click and then export on map. You can also export all the maps in one sort of batch operation by going file, um, export and then selecting the image maps type. But if you want to do them uh, map by map, this is the preferred way to do it. So we're exporting and we're saving this in the same folder as we are with the CR2 file. Um, most programs will just kind of locate it automatically, and if it doesn't, you just uh, you can you can specify that. So whether you're using Dad Studio or Poser, they have um, you know different things. If you might have to manually uh, locate the file, but that's okay. Anyway, actually, what I was just showing you here is that typically there's two options you can do here. You can export a new CR2 file, which has this updated information inside of it. So what it is, it's an exact copy of the old CR2 file, but instead of uh, the, the old texture map reference here, the other new texture map reference. And this only works for the uh, the sort of the standard old school CR2 files without all those material nodes in them. Um, so the standard stock models you'll get from DAS, this will work fine because they're, I believe they're all designed to, to um, to set up the textures in that appropriate way. If there's any advanced texturing setting up with the material nodes and that are linked together, um, it, you know, something more advanced you do in the material room and poser, then that won't be directly supported. And you'll have to manually assign those maps inside poser and um, which is okay, you know, take a few minutes or whatever. You can't do everything automatic. This is all we do here. So um, the CR2 file and the mat injection file is another option as well. Um, that's basically like this pose file, which just automatically sets up these the textures. Um, again, in this case, the simplest uh, case, not the complex, um, you know, ma material nodes. Okay. So anyway, we're going to save it out as a, as a new CR2 file. So that's our old one there. And we're just going to add the word new face to it. And we're going to save it alongside of it. And uh, just to show you uh, what's happening, we're going to go to new project. We're going to re-import it into Blacksmith 3D. And uh, just to see that, that if that new texture has is, is been applied to the face. And because that texture was alongside the CR2 file, it was able to locate it properly. So it didn't ask you to prompt, it didn't ask you to locate. But if it did, uh, if you saved it in a different location, you might have to tell that the software, give it a little hint to tell where to find it, okay? And so anyway, we saw that that, uh, that texture did come in properly and there it is in the, uh, the Windows Finder. Again, Mac OS, it's all the same here. Uh, now, um, what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you the the runtime structure. How um, now? Here is where the um, all the other textures are because we didn't modify those. So this is where they were automatically located and um, applied to the to the model. And so anyway, we can. Uh, I believe we could skip ahead and now the next part is anyway I was just going through all the different files there so the next part is I'm going to um, import this model into um, into DAS Studio okay now uh, here we are in DAS Studio and we're just going to simply uh, import that CR2 file um, just to show you um, that the texture maps are properly assigned um, as as we intended. And now you see here, that's what happened is that um, that studio just wasn't able to find that particular file and you just had to locate it manually, but like, which is strange because it's in the exact same folder as a CR2 file, but it just didn't think to look there. So uh, this is that same folder in which the, uh, uh, the CR2 file was, but and there is the image. So luckily enough, that was the first folder we got. So all we had to do is click on new face and, and uh, away we go. 
Other than that, there's absolutely no issues. That CR2 file imported, and we notice that red stripe is across his face. This is that modified version of the face texture. All the other textures were found in the locations that they were before we imported that CR2 file and before we made our modifications. So the only thing different is this face texture. Okay, now uh, we just want to have a few notes just um, in case. Um, any, any of you guys are new out there and you, and you don't real, uh, realize some of these subtleties and you might get confused. That brow that I was talking about, if we can notice here in Dad Studio, because this is meant to be a renderer, this is showing you what it's supposed to look like. Um, so it is automatically making the transparent stuff transparent. Well, in Blacksmith 3D, in that default uh, color maps mode, you're looking at all the polygons that are there just for the color maps, just for the bump maps, just for the transparency maps. It's meant to be an editor, so we don't want to automatically hide away things that are actually there, and that's why you see it and you have to hide it away if you so choose. But in here, this is going to be meant to, uh, this is where you're going to do the sort of the final rendering, so it makes sense that the display mode here is going to have all that set up, uh, looking somewhat what it looks like when you actually hit the render button. So, uh, so just keep be mindful of that. And um, otherwise, uh, this was a completely um, um, like sort of flawless transition. Um, one thing to note is make sure you update the absolute latest version of the software. Let the automatic updater do its thing because uh, there's a couple little uh, uh, minor uh, bugs that I found when doing this tutorial and I fixed them on the fly so that um, those updates will be ready before this video has actually been uploaded. So as a general rule, always check for updates. I'm always going to be adding little tweaks here and there, adding new features. So automatic updates are a good thing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope this helps you um, to import and export your CR2 files flawlessly and uh, understanding the issues that, uh, um, that come with them. All right. Thank you very much for watching.